Hello everyone, today I thought I would cover something that I see quite a bit in the Twitter software as a service world, which is uh, emails being sent to the admin users of your application whenever a new account is created. This is great if you have like a workflow where you need the admins to be involved with the user account creation process or the after creation process, or maybe they have to come in and like set up something for the user. So you have like more of a hands-on product that you're selling. In this case, uh, we can set up something like this. So let's come over here. We'll go over to localhost port 3000. We'll click sign up. We'll do a email. I don't know, we'll just say email at example.com. And then we'll go with a password of password. Assuming I typed that incorrectly, we should now be able to click sign up and see here in the terminal, if we scroll up, uh, that the uh, user was signed up. We can see right here, new user email. Um, that's the text version of the email. And then in the HTML version, we get a complete HTML doc. And what this says is uh, you got some mod mail right here. Uh, we have a new user signed up and user email at example.com just signed up. So it's just a quick little email that gets sent specifically when a user gets created. We're not gonna be doing this in like a in, inside of the model. So we're gonna be uh, overriding the device controllers, which is a good thing to learn how to do. And we're going to be using a service object to do it. But to get started, we need to actually create the application. So we'll go ahead and we'll run a Rails new video. We'll CD into that video and then we'll go ahead and we'll run a code dot. Again, this is a pretty simple use case, but if you don't know how to do something like this, uh, you know, that's like me telling you that discrete mathematics is simple. It's simple because I took a class on it. Uh, but if you got to figure out for yourself, uh, you know, some of the proofs, you're probably going to be there for a minute. But okay, how do we actually do this? Well, there's really only a couple steps. First thing is let's add device to our application. So we're gonna say bundle add device. I'm gonna control plus a bunch because I still feel like you might not be able to see that. That'll add the device gem. After we add the device gem, we then want to do a rails g device colon install command. I'll go ahead and install it. Then we can do a rails g device user to create our user accounts. Next step is a uh, migration. So we're going to say Rails G migration. We'll say add role to user and we'll say the role is of type integer. Once we've done that, we can now come into our DB uh, folder in our application into our migrate this latest migration. We'll do a comma and then a default. Let me move my cursor so you can see this. Oops, a default of zero so that the default role will be zero, which means we'll set zero to be like the regular users. We can then go ahead and do a db colon migrate command. After this, we can go ahead and we can say rails g mailer, we'll say this is the user mailer. And for the user mailer, we want to set some kind of action after we do this, right? So what we want to think about is like what what would make sense for this to be called similar to how we name our actions in our uh, HTML pages when we go to like the the index action or the create action or whatever. In this case, we would want this to be something like the new user. Uh, I don't know. We could say new user email because it's a, a new user was created, so we're sending out an email, something like that. And by running it with this additional argument, it'll now create our uh, users mailer, and it'll also create both the HTML and the TX or the text version of this file. So we can now come in here, and this is going to be the email that actually gets sent out. So we come into our app, our views, our user mailer. We should see both a uh, text version of this as well as the HTML version. So this is the HTML version. This is the text version. And by default, this isn't going to be the entirety of the mailer. If you actually come into your app, your views, your layouts, you can see this mailer.html.erb and this mailer.text.erb. The text just renders whatever's in the mailer, uh, but the HTML version actually has an entire HTML document set up in here, including some styles that tell you that the styles need to be inline and then a yield tag in the body. So if you want to change anything here around all of your emails, this is where you're going to do it, similar to your application.html.erp. Hopefully now this makes sense why you have three files in here. But in our case, we really just need to come into our new user email. And then in this new user email, we just kind of want to change whatever it says in here. Uh, so maybe we just like refactor this a bit to be something like a main tag. We have a H1 that says this is mod mail, say a new user signed up, and then we say the user at email has just signed up. We can also take this and copy this over to the uh, text file. So let's copy all of this, paste it in here. And instead of doing the H1, we can actually just get rid of a lot of these tags 
and we can just say, all right, we're just going with the basic text in here if someone signs up for our service with, uh, and they only uh, have access to like a text file in their email. So that takes care of the front end version of this. The next thing we wanna do is, uh, let's give ourselves a way to actually log in. You can do that with a Rails G controller pages home, just like that, go ahead and run that. And then we can go ahead and run a Rails S to start our server. We can come over to our routes file inside of config and routes.rb. And in here, what we wanna do is change this git to a root and the slash to a hash so that we can have a homepage. Then we can come over here and we can refresh this. Now we want to come into our actual homepage. We'll come into app views, pages, and our home. Inside of our homepage, this is where we're gonna be doing a little bit of copy pasting because no one wants to watch me type this every time. Uh, we're just gonna say you're logged in as the current user's email. Here's a link to edit your account. And here is the link to log out. If you're not signed in, then we want to have a sign up and a login link. And that's basically the entire workflow right there. We'll come over here and refresh. We can now sign up and log in. So let me log or sign up with dean at example.com. This is going to be my admin account. Oops, password. Uh, so this is my admin account. Now I want to come over to our controllers, our pages and our homepage. And I just want to render a console real quick by typing console. And now we can come in here and in our console, we can type current underscore user uh, to access our current user. We can see the role is zero. So let's come into our models and our user.rb. Inside of here, we wanna create a enum for the role and we wanna give this something like a uh, user is zero and an admin is one. We can now come over here and refresh and now we can do a current underscore user dot admin exclamation mark. You can see down here the yellow text means that updated it. And now if we refresh and we do current underscore user dot admin question mark, we can see that they are in fact a admin. So now this account will get an email uh, whenever a new user signs up. So that's good. We now have our admin users. So let's go ahead and let's add in the override for device and then we can finish up here. To do this, we have to stop our server and do a Rails G device, uh, oops, device colon controllers. And we want to do the controllers for the users. So we'll, go ahead and we'll go ahead and we'll run this. We can then do a Rails S again. Now it does tell us right here uh, how to override the routes, but of course we can just come into our routes ourselves and we can say, look, we know we need to override the registrations controller. We've done this tutorial a hundred times. We'll just do something like this. Next, we can come up to our controllers, our users, and our registrations controller. In here, what we wanna do is override the create action. The reason being, you could do this as an after create in your user.rb. You come in here and you say, you know, something like after, uh, after create, maybe like assign default role, or we just say like email everyone, right? Email admins. Uh, but the reason why I don't like doing this is because it doesn't really make sense to email your admins inside of your user account. Uh, it seems more like something that should be handled somewhere else. So what we can do is inside of our registrations controller, uh, we can override what this default uh, create does. So we can say, all right, for this, we want to have a do block. We want to put in a resource. We can come down here and do an end. And then in here, let's call out to a service, which we'll call user registration service dot call and we'll pass in the resource we've covered the dot call stuff before in a uh, service object tutorial i think but basically all we're going to do is or no, it might have been the proc uh, tutorial i don't know but we can right click on our app we can call this services and then inside of our services if i can find the file we can just do this we can right click new file and we can name this the user registration uh, underscore service dot rb file and then inside of this file, we can just paste in something like this. We have a class, we define a self.call for the user. This is what we're calling when we do the user registration.call. Uh, and then in here, we just pass in the user. If the user persisted, which means the user was saved, we can then call that user mailer that we have, which is down uh, inside of our mailers right here. We can call that, call the new user email method pass in the user and call deliver later. So now inside of our mailers, we can finish up here. This is what our user mailer currently looks like. So this is the back end for our mailer. There's usually gonna be a default from in your application mailer, which is where you can set what the default uh, email is from, where it's from, and then you can pass in a layout, which is of course coming from our uh, app views layouts right here. Now for this default from, there is one in the application mailer, but we can also just put one in here inside of our user mailer, or we can say this like notifications at example.com. 
And then instead of having this new user email right here, we can just pass in an additional argument that means it takes or an additional parameter, it takes in a user parameter. We can assign at user equal to user, which is how we're using this in our uh, emails. We can then say our admins are equal to the user dot where the role is the admin. We can then iterate through each of these admins and we can say for each of these admins, send a mail to the admin dot email with a subject that says a new user has signed up just like that. That's that uh, user right here that we're assigning to at user is why in our user mailer in our HTML.erb, we can say at user dot email. So that's just coming from our uh, new user email action right here, which correlates to the new user email right here. All of this together now uh, would work in theory. However, we've covered this before. We have a server currently running. We just added a new folder to our uh, app directory, the services folder. This right now will not work until you stop your server and start it again. So they actually seize the services directory. Otherwise it'll tell you this user registration service is nonsense. It doesn't know what to do with it. Once you have all of that done, uh, you should then be good to go. And I don't know why my formatter is being weird here. If I put in another end, I think this is just going to blow up again. Uh, so we're just going to leave it like this. Uh, but now we can come over here and we can say, all right, let's open up a new tab. We'll do a localhost port 3000. We'll hit tab once and enter to sign up. And we'll just do john at doe.com with a, pa oops, a password of password. And I'll come in here. I'll hit enter a couple times. Now, if I click sign up, it should be good to scroll up here and we can hopefully see uh, we get a whole bunch of action mailer stuff happening. We then come down here and we see that, that there was an email from notifications at example.com to dean at example.com, which is my email on this account. Makes sense. Uh, you have the subject of new user sign up, and then you're going to have the text version of this, which is just that mod mail we set up where it says user John has signed up. And then down here we have the full HTML version that gets emailed out, which is just a quick little main tag that says mod mail, a new user signed up, user john at doe.com has signed up. Now the final step here, if you wanna see what this HTML actually looks like in your browser, you can just come over here to your explorer, scroll down, come into your test, your mailers, your previews, your user mail preview, and then in here what you wanna do uh, it'll tell you, you can visit this URL right here, which is uh, localhost port 3000 slash rails slash mailer slash user mailer slash new user email. But if you actually go to this, it should tell you, yep, wrong number of arguments uh, because it's expecting a user to be passed into this user email uh, or this user mailer new user email. So we can't exactly pass in a user right here until we actually create one. So for this, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy a line here. Uh, we just pass in a user.new with an email, a password, and a password confirmation, basic device stuff. And we can pass that into our new user email. And now we can come over here and we can refresh. And this will be exactly what it looks like in the browser whenever you receive this email. You can click on HTML or even plain text and you can see exactly what it says, where whatever you put in here, like dean at example.com, will get changed and that'll be what it emails to your moderation team or your admin team. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully this was informative and helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next one.